Thank you very much, Mark Walder, for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, you are the CEO and managing partner of Ringier. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's a great company. You have over 7,000 employees. You work in 19 countries. You are a diversified Swiss media company uh, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia. And also one of the key points, which I will, I'm always surprised, you have over 70% of your operating profit that is coming from digital. You're one of the first uh, really company and CEO that has driven digital in this company deeply. And, uh, and it is, of course, also recognized by many people and you're also president of Digital Switzerland. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, thank you. So uh, we are in the middle of a big crisis, uh, of course. Uh, what and what is your feeling? How are you personally responding to this situation? But also interestingly, how are you communicating and what are you communicating with your people in the staff and your customers? First of all, I want to um, thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to, ha to answer a couple of questions. And I will be very honest and I will be um, uh, trying to be very precise. Um, the good thing is that Ringi as a company acted very, very early. Uh, I remember the very first call we had many weeks ago with all the CEOs of our daughter companies. Um, I was very much afraid. Why? Because I thought they think uh, Mark Walder is now panicking and he's exaggerating uh, because at that time Corona was in small villages in the north of Italy, a couple of cases. But it was at that time already quite obvious that this will spread and it will just increase um, how we have seen it. That gave us the chance to be very early in terms of um, taking our time for home office, protecting especially uh, uh, risk, risk people, elderly people, and get the, um, you know, the operations installed so that we are still able to, to do our our companies and to deliver the services no matter if it's media like you know the media assets we have in switzerland like le temps or blick or bilanz or handelszeitung beobachter schweizer illustrierte whatever or on the marketplace side so we kept the operations up and about 14 days later we had already i think almost six and a half thousand people in the home office um, and, and operations were up and running. That's the business part. The private part is um, I switched completely into, into home office. I'm living uh, close to Zurich, switched in, into um, home office. And um, this is difficult. It's extremely difficult uh, to communicate, to have a structure. Uh, we have a child that is doing homeschooling and I would just to all who see me now here say it is a tough time. It is a difficult time because we have to structure our days. You have the kids. They need a structure too. They need help. Uh, sometimes they are bored. Sometimes they freak out because they have to stay at home all the time. So it's an extremely difficult time. And the third point is we have to be very strict in in not doing any mistakes now. So I know people tend to go out now because it's nice weather and they want to go to the lake and they want to see friends and they want to play a match of, of soccer and the kids want to play basketball or whatever. But we have to be very strict at the moment and really stay in our small families. Let's not mix up the families. Um, be very radical in terms of social distancing. I'll give you an example. When I go for a walk, I have those three meters of difference if somebody is, is, is crossing me. So I think that's really important. And when I talk to people in the government, they're extremely scared that people now with the nice weather, they say, hey, it's not so bad. We do our excursions. We go to the Ticino, the wonderful Ticino, uh, for Easter holidays, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think it's not the right moment to. We have to be very strict at the moment and hope that the curve is going to flatten. So that's uh, my very honest answer to your opening question. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, we know that we are uh, we are facing already very uh, 
special situation also in terms of economics of all our company. And we've been talking for many years around the social corporate responsibility, about sustainability. What does it mean on today corporate social responsibility and how that it can be matching with the interest of generating profits in this situation? Uh, the first, the first uh, decision we made is that we have uh, short time work in many companies, depending, I'll give you an example, we, uh, Ticket Corner belongs to our group and for Ticket Corner, it was just down to zero almost within one day when the government announced that there will be no more events, it just flattened. And um, what we did is we said that uh, implementing short time work, um, of course, was a measurement. And we said the employees of the Ringier Group will get their full salary. Um, at least until June, and then we decide again. So I don't think we should be punishing the employees at the moment. They are, as I said, in an extremely difficult situation with their families. They can't see their parents. Kids are at home. They have to do a lot of work. Sometimes I ask the employees, how are you working? And they say, we're working 12 hours a day on, 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 with these earphones, etc. because it's in a crisis. We're in a, in a true crisis, which we would have never been able to imagine. I mean, I imagine how we have to deal with shop going, going for groceries at the moment, or the kids again, uh, staying at home or the businesses that are just in a dramatic situations. Most of the businesses, also small businesses like, like your business, Carlo, extremely difficult situations. So we should not punish uh, the employees and, and uh, at least give them the full salary. That's one point. The second point I think is the state, the government is doing a good job in terms of those cash injections that they decided to do 40 uh, billion Swiss francs it, in a very fast way. Banks did a good job, I think, especially UBS, Credit Suisse, but also the smaller ones. I, I understand 30 minutes and, and you get your cash injection usually. Um, I think with the short time work, they did a good job. But let's not forget uh, the people who run their own small business. You know, um, they have to get help too. And uh, luckily, we are in Switzerland here because we are active in many countries, as you say. And a lot of other countries are not uh, having measurements and policies in place like we do have it in Switzerland already. So at least I think uh, from that part, uh, it, it's a good sign. But I feel, I don't want to be too long, but I feel the pressure of the economy, of course, who say, hey, how long can we have this lockdown? Um, how big is the damage that we're doing? By the way, also to the society, if we have this lockdown completely um, uh, for another couple of weeks, recession, et cetera, et cetera. So the government needs to find a very smart way, step by step, to get out of this complete, as we call it, horizontal lockdown in maybe partial lockdowns for certain people or for certain economies or for certain businesses. We are, we are all very much aware that the situation is really terrible from an economic point of view, both for company and for the state and also for society. But let's be positive. We will for sure get out of the crisis. We will probably find a vaccine or even not, we will find our way out, I'm sure about it. Do you think there will be some positive effects on society and economy after this crisis? Many positive uh, uh, things, I think. But let me first address without being pessimistic. I'm usually an optimist. We have to be aware, Carlo, that um, 2020 will be under the impression of Corona. This will not go away. It will not stay a complete lockdown as we see it now. It will, the situation will improve also for the Ticino, but it will be under the impression of Corona. It will not be a normal life in 2020. And if we are aware of this, and if we um, face this, then I think it's easier to adjust. Now, a couple of positive thoughts. Um, digitization is the clear, I would say winner, if I may say so, in this crisis. Um, small examples, people who didn't have much contact with digital services 
do digital services today, day by day. They do digital shopping. Uh, they communicate like we do now. Uh, they find their ways through digital uh, services to, to keep up their normal life, as an example. Companies learned how to switch from a normal offline world in the offices back home where everything now takes place digital. Uh, so I think a huge driver for digitization, and you know this has always been something I have been fighting very much for, so this is clearly something that is going to have a huge impact. Secondly, I think on a more philosophical um, um, perspective, I think a lot of people have told me in the past days they, they adjust what is really important in life and what is not so important in life. I think we, we're, we're getting into an adjustment uh, within our heads and within our souls, what really counts. Relationships count, of course, health counts. Um, maybe be more aware of flying around the globe constantly is maybe not the most, um, it's not, probably not the most important and the best thing. I think focus on your smaller world becomes more important, whereas maybe in the past 20 years, it was really totally globally focused, everything you wanted to do, you know, I think that will completely change. For how long this will last, I don't know. But as an example, I had a call this morning and we said, we should focus on what Switzerland delivers as good things, vacation, products, services, companies, etc. So this kind of, this focus becomes a little bit smaller or maybe even much smaller. And what is more important in life and what is less important in life, I think is a new question that uh, is going to change society. I, I agree, totally agree. Uh, we know that during every crisis, uh, media play a significant role. Uh, and I guess right now, your medias and the full group is reacting uh, to the crisis very importantly. Uh, but what is the situation right now? Because I've been talking with people and say, oh, media is a great period for them because there are a lot of readers. But then on the other side, I've heard a lot of people say, yeah, but one second, because the advertising market is going really down. But can you share any data and impression uh, with us? It's an absolutely dramatic situation for media because a big part of media revenues is advertising market. And uh, a smaller part is, is revenues from readers or from users. Advertising imploded completely. Uh, if there's no economy out there, if nobody goes outside, there is no, doesn't make sense to advertise. Very few examples um, that, that uh, are, uh, I would say, advertising at the moment, uh, but in general, advertising is down. Now, our role is um, economically, it's, it's, a, it's a complete drama for, for media. Uh, a lot of media companies have to fight that they survive, that they get through this uh, liquidity problem they have because the operations are up and running. The operations, I think, what I tell all my, we have about 150 media assets and the, what I constantly tell them and I think where they're doing a good job is independent, reliable, relevant media have never been more important than today. So they have to be aware of the big importance they have at the moment. They really have to report in a way that adjusts, I would say, facts without being too negative. It, it's not good if they scandalize everything. So they have to be uh, in a, I would say, very responsible way reporting around Corona what's going on. I give you one example. One of our media brands um, reported very big that there was a case in Belgium, I think, where a young woman died of Corona. 
Now the question is, how are you transporting this message? Because it, statistically, this is an exception. If you if you bring this story without context, you will scare people too much because they say, oh, you know, it's going to be very critical also for young people. Yes, Corona can be dangerous for younger people, but it's still the exception. So that gives you an example of what we are working on very much. Uh, secondly, we have to give the people also facts where they understand, as you said, there is a way to go through this crisis. It might take longer than we have thought, but there is a way we can go through our crisis. A third aspect is we did a big, big initiative two weeks ago where we said to the people in Switzerland, please stay at home. Because at that time, remember two weeks ago, people here, especially around uh, Zurich, Bern, etc., thought, well, this is a Ticino problem and you know we can still have fun here. And we really urged them to follow the rules and to really stay at home, limit contacts radically, etc. So I think media do have an important role, a more important role than ever before in the past three decades, I think. So we're trying to balance this very, um, um, with a lot of attention, I would say. In, in the in the whole group, and of course you have uh, many different businesses, is there any company or any business that actually vice versa um, has some positive effect from Yes, group? yes. Very few, but there are um, companies that are in e-commerce. I'll give you two examples. Uh, DineDeal, uh, who is a strong e-commerce player in Switzerland, um, is doing well. And the Geschenkide, Ide Kado, uh, is doing well. Um, my family, for example, ordered a, a lot of games to play at home with the family and the kids uh, with Geschenkide, etc. So e commerce is, of course, strong, but almost all the rest is just uh, being extremely punished by, uh, by the lockdown. Yeah. Of course, you also hold a very important uh, position as the president of Digital Switzerland, which you have actually contributed uh, or even ideated as a project. And I guess you have very often contact with other CEOs uh, among the association. What are they expecting from the Swiss government? I mean, you already mentioned that there was a very good reaction. Uh, many international players were even astonished at what the Swiss government did in a positive sense. Uh, but what's next? The next phase is probably even more difficult than the phase we have behind us or we are in. We are in this lockdown, in this horizontal lockdown. Horizontal lockdown means the lockdown counts for everybody. We might have been late, like many countries. We could have done the lockdown earlier, probably. But it was the easier decision because it's just lockdown full stop. Now, the more complex situation is how to, uh, as I said before, step by step, open the lockdown, you know, and where are you going to open it up? And how much are you going to open it up? One example, schools, are kids going back to school in May? If yes, the whole class, only half of the class, and they switch week by week or day by day, which shops can be open? Um, so there, I think digitization, to your point, Carlo, can play an extremely relevant role. Why? Um, let's say everybody in Switzerland and, of course, everybody in Italy and everybody in Germany and everybody in France would have on their smartphone an app installed. Everybody would have an app here. And the app would allow of course, anonymized, so along with, uh, with the GDPR, um, be able to track who have you been uh, in contact with in the past three or four days. So tracking and tracing. And you would become positive and within a minute, you can send an alert to everybody who has been in contact with you to go uh, into isolation 
their digitization can play an extremely important role in this reopening phase to keep the curve down because we have to, there is no way around keeping the curve down. You know, if we open up and the curve goes up, big problem. So I think there uh, we're trying to implement and bring good solutions. Um, that's a role that Switzerland can take. But at the end of the day, all the countries need to be aligned because it doesn't make sense if you have it under control in Lugano, but not in Milano, then, you know, doesn't doesn't matter. And also yeah. all the people have to stick by the rules and use this app and the app will, would, would function over Bluetooth uh, and you would have a protocol, very precise. And I think that's the biggest part where digitization now comes in. Um, of course, on the data side, data analytics side, in terms of, you know, who is sick, what are the symptoms, what's the, the age structure, what's the risk factors, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of data analytics, but that's up to the pharma industry now who are looking for medicamentation and vaccination. And of course, their digitization and data analytics uh, is playing an extremely uh, important role. Uh, together with um, artificial intelligence. But I think for the, for the society, um, this tool can be extremely important, probably more important than ever before in our lives. You've been working since uh, many years uh, to promote Switzerland as a hub uh, for digital, uh, digital companies, for investment from abroad. I think if should I, should I think someone specifically has a name that has mostly and promoted Switzerland International to attract international companies on digital uh, research and investment investors. I, I cannot think anyone better than you. Uh, on the other side, I was reading uh, many international entrepreneurs on LinkedIn, which they were really uh, positively uh, responding on how Switzerland has reacted as, as, a, as a country, as a government, how we are, they are supporting. Uh, company. So I, I think we are in this undesirable crisis. We are anyway even reinforcing the image of Switzerland um, as, as an interesting company from where to operate a business at least. Uh, and I also have the perception talking with many other CEOs of other companies uh, without mentioning them that there are some industry in ICT that actually are growing quite a lot and they will have significant budget uh, in the future. I was watching the stock uh, value of Zoom, for instance, it's, it's incredible, uh, but also many other any other software companies. Um, you know that in Ticino we are we're working hard since many years to create this uh, lifestyle tech innovation center, which we want to candidate to be a Switzerland innovation park. What do you think? Is it something that can help for the future and how the relaunch of the economy here in Ticino, which on course we'd be deeply affected by the situation now. I tell you a, 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 an anecdote when uh, when uh, you invited me to the Ticino, it was I think two and a half years ago, it was not on my landscape. We were talking about Zurich, about Zug, about uh, the whole area around Lausanne and Geneva, etc. And the impact in this, uh, in this youth congress center and who was there opened my eyes and Ticino has definitely the potential to be an important um, tech uh, and digital hub in this country because due to its uh, very special, um, I would call it lifestyle ecosystem that is extremely strong, linked also to the northern part of Italy. Uh, that's my first thought. Um, secondly, I think, again, digitization will boost um, the whole development extremely fast. Until maybe five years ago, I had to run around the country and say digitization is important for schools, for companies, big companies, small companies, industries who did not think so much about uh, digitization yet. Now you don't have to do this anymore. I think it's clear for everybody that who is not really well prepared as a company or as a region in this country for digitization is just going to be a loser. And on the other hand, those who do a good job are going to be the winners. Um, the last point is in terms of government, and I don't want to criticize the government because they do a good crisis management job, as you said, Carlo. But if you look how well 
um, prepared uh, Asian countries were in terms of how digital tools can help uh, to actually oversee the level and the peaks and the developments of the crisis, I think uh, Europe is far behind Asia. That's a lesson uh, we are learning today. And interestingly enough, the US, who has been a driver for digitization because of the Silicon Valley, is not in a good shape. Silicon Valley itself is great with the big platforms like Google and YouTube and, and uh, Amazon and, and Facebook, etc. Apple, the leaders, but the US as a nation is not well equipped for the citizens in terms of digitization. They're struggling in, in, in gathering the right data now around Corona, etc., which is actually an easy thing if you have your digital tools in place, your digital platforms in place. So Asia taught us that it's probably the leading part in this world in terms of real digitization for the society. I think that is quite clear. And we, I think, understood that. And Europe has to be very much aware of this. And I think all the politicians, all the policymakers have understood that in the next couple of years, for the good of, not the good of the profits of the company, but for the good of the society, uh, we need to uh, become better in, in digital services for our, um, for our society, for our, um, um, people living in our country. It's still extremely difficult to have digital services from your government, uh, from your community, still not easy in this country. And I think Asia is much further ahead. Thank you very much. Is there something I forgot to ask you for our community? No, um, I would just, um, my personal message is it's tough times. As Berzé said, um, it's going to be a marathon. And it's easier to go into this challenge if you know this is going to be a marathon and not a sprint. But uh, if we do well, and I think with the Swiss qualities we have, uh, we will do well. Um, we will go into past this marathon. And um, yeah, it takes a bit of time. It takes, I think, uh, a lot of structure and discipline. But we are in... Uh, in a good position to to go through this crisis. Thank you very much, Mark, for your time. Thank you, Carlo. Thanks to all of you. Take good care and stay safe.